these are some really, really important facts and figures to know. Um, so Hannah, do you want to read the first one? Yeah. So there are on average 180 minutes um, for 16 to 24 year olds spent on social media every single day. Um, that's over two hours. And yeah. Um, the next one, we have 3.5 billion people use social media, um, which billion is a lot. And when we first read that stat, we were like, is that wrong? Um, and then we have 45% of teens feel overwhelmed by social media. And that was the one that really stuck out to us when we were researching. Um, and we'll kind of talk next about our mission and then how we got to where we are today. So our mission in general is Log Off is this global movement led by passionate teens to further dialogue about the multifaceted nature of social media and we work to promote the healthy usage of it. So the history of the log off movement. So going back in ninth grade, Hannah and I are lucky enough to go to a school with a leadership incubator. Um, basically you enter in eighth grade or ninth grade and you have to come up with a project to better your community, a very broad statement. Um, so I was looking for a project that incorporated things I was very passionate about at the time, I was not a digital wellness advocate. I was really into singing, trying to figure out how to do something with that. But little did I know at that point in my life, I had a really, really heavy social media addiction. And a lot of people don't associate addiction with social media. Um, but you know, as I began to use social media more, I got it in seventh grade. Um, going into ninth grade, I was spending five to six hours on it a day, mindlessly scrolling, but every time I entered the app, I left feeling worse. Yet I continued to go through that cycle because it was an addiction for me. It was as if I was pulling that, that one slot machine every time I went on there trying to scroll to see if there's, there was a possible connection. So finally, when I was searching for my project and I, I figured out that I'd reached a subconscious breaking point with social media. And I remember distinctly one day reaching for my phone after it buzzed, that Pelovian response and just saying to myself, why do I not have control? Why does this one thing control me in such a parasitic way? So from that one moment, I began to research and little did I know if you look up social media, bad question mark, mental health repercussions of social media, a ton of things start to come. Um, and there are studies on studies that show you the statistics and the facts that we showed you prior that just say a lot of teens are overwhelmed with social media, but conversations are not ongoing about this. Um, and I personally have a generalized anxiety disorder and I have OCD and I figured out in my search and research that being on social media with those two mental health concerns can be really dangerous if you don't know how to properly navigate it. So for me, I it really just became intrigued by the search to find a space for teens to discuss social media, to discuss its impact on all of the teens and Gen Z's mental health and then to find ways to exist on these apps in a healthier way while maintaining healthy, just a healthy mental health status. So that is my personal story and how I kind of got to the idea of log off for my leadership incubator project. But Hannah can kind of talk about the next steps on how it materialized and how she became part of the, pro the project. Yeah, so Emma, you know, really started working on it. Our, the, our like junior year, uh, late into our junior year, and she was like, asking like hey Hannah like do you want to like are you interested and I was really interested in like the idea of log off I had never really thought about social media as an addiction in a way that like you can be addicted to caffeine mm -hmm. and like other things um but it definitely was like really eye-opening when I first started thinking about it I also definitely knew I had a problem with social media um like very similar story to Emma in terms of like how like much I used to mindlessly scroll, I would set like the screen limits, um, but it I really was not very good about like keeping my goals with that. And yeah, it was just like a very bad cycle and led to a lot of dependency on my phone mm -hmm. to just like be okay with being alone and like having like a good time with myself. And so then I decided to do some more research, join Log Off, and then we created, you know, the TLC moved forward, added a lot of new teammate or team members who really thought about social media in a very different way than mm -hmm. I always thought about it. And it was like the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. And we really just 
the main point about starting log off was just as we did this research, we couldn't find that space for teens to just have a discussion about mental health affecting us or, or social media affecting our mental health in a negative way and how to move forward. Because with all of the studies and research, you just see these alarming facts, especially with the rise of the social dilemma, the amazing documentary that was out on Netflix this past summer. Um, they give you all the negative facts and they say, look, social media can really harm your mental health because it's giving you a false sense of connection, yet there are no solutions. And that's something Gen Z and our generation specifically is really gonna have to deal with. So we thought might as well start those conversations while we're young so that we can be better equipped to have those conversations and push forth you know, legislative regulation and stuff like that um, to protect later generations um, from having that same huge mental health um, spike with anxiety, depression and rates of suicide. So. In general, we have, we started with a blog, um, maybe just the idea for a teen leadership council to get together people to have those conversations. And it has materialized into this really, really beautiful entity where we have a teen leadership council that houses all of these different initiatives. And then we have a monthly writers group um, with wonderful, phenomenal teen writers from around the globe. Um, and we're starting to kind of come up with other groups like a possible Reddit or Discord for people to get involved in a more relaxed way. So with our Teen Leadership Council, um, it, it's on the next slide, but we have over 70 teens from over 17 different countries in it. We have a well-being initiative that talks about how do we find that connection and that balance with screen time and just enjoying our life. So that talks with that goes through meditation. Um, we're starting an I connect group to talk with different teams around the globe via zoom. So it's using technology in a more productive way. Um, we have a PR team, we have outreach event planning. Um, we're starting a female empowerment initiative because it's, you know, we didn't think that and this is just a preface, we, we didn't really know that all of these initiatives and things would pop up and log off, yeah. but it's amazing how in the digital wellness community and in just the mental health community, how many different things people want to fight for and get involved in. So some people that come to us are really into well-being, some are into the intersection between, you know, female empowerment and corrosive body standards and social media. Um, so we have that, we have the blog, um, we have website design, a new podcast team, video production. We are just starting an LGBTQ plus initiative to kind of talk about how um, there have been increased rates of suicide and depression with people in that community and how to use log off as a platform that can reroute members of the community that feel isolated via social media to other communities that will make them feel more accepted. Um, we have a regional chapter and an ambassador and admin um, and character ed, which we will talk a little bit more about. Um, and Hannah, do you want to talk about just the general sense of community um, and how we've interacted with our team members? Oh, yeah. So um, we all like talk to each other through Slack and it's a really collaborative process um, with so many team members. Like it's been amazing, like trying to figure out the time zones, trying to meet and stuff. But um, through all of the different initiatives, people can decide like what they are most interested in and then they can work on, you know, whatever most excites them. So if they're very invested in like going outdoors more and like being more into nature instead of staring at your screen, like they, they love the well-being initiative. And like we're always looking for new members. And I think we are like uh, in general, like it's 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 like we are not going to expect too much of you if you do want to join um but if you no matter how much effort you're willing to put in like we like yeah we we love for you exactly exactly and it's just it really i i make this comment a lot i'm a huge disney fan so the song like it's a small world you don't really understand the importance of that statement or at least the validity of it until you get into a project like this where we have friends and members in india dubai in um london and all of these teens are dealing with the same issue. All of us, we have this one channel on our Slack that's called Just Chatting. And it's where all of us can say, you know, I'm struggling with this. I need an app that can help me check screen time. Um, I'm feeling more anxious. Does anyone have any suggestions? Um, so it's very nice to, even on a digital platform, have that open channel and have that open communication to have these conversations because that's another thing log off is trying to do. It's trying to destigmatize the conversation between teens about digital wellness. So I can 
go up to a teen or go up to Hannah and say, hey, would you mind putting down your phone? Or I, I need to talk with you about how anxious I get on social media. Do you have any advice? We want to have those conversations more often within our generation. Um, and we're hoping that log off can kind of push forth that narrative. So this is just a little bit about, you know, what our impact has been. Again, we have 70 teens in 17 different countries. Um, we have over 11,000 website views in 100 countries. Um, and this is my most, my favorite thing. We've partnered with wonderful, wonderful people in the industry, the Center for Human Technology, um, the National Day of Unplugging. We've had conversations with, oh goodness, like well over a hundred digital companies around the globe. Um, and again, it's it really shows you how warm the community is and how collaborative between companies. Everyone wants to involve teens because I think a lot of people understand that that's the missing piece in the digital wellness industry. It's having that teen voice because if you look at all the statistics, we're the generation that is getting hit the hardest because we have our social life ingrained in social media. So it's not like a, we can put the genie back in the bottle situation. We can. We just have to learn how to live with social media and take that parasitic relationship and turn it into a mutualistic one. So upcoming in log off, this is a little bit about where we're going. Um, these are two projects we're extremely excited about. Um, Hannah, do you want to talk about school curriculum and then I'll talk about technically politics? Yeah, so the, the character ed, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we started character ed. Um, if you did not have character ed in school, basically it's like this program you do when you're in like, uh, you know, when you're pretty young, it's like mm -hmm. third to sixth grade. And it's basically just teaching you like how to um, like be a, be a good person almost. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's like teaching you like about bullying, about what to do if you see someone getting unfairly treated, mm -hmm. um, what to do if, how to make new friends, like it's all kinds of stuff like that. And what we wanted to do was introduce a digital aspect to the character ed program. So a lot of schools, you know, teach like what to do in situations face to face, but a lot of the times for most kids nowadays, it's going to be online. Um, and it's going to be over like, you know, an Instagram, mm -hmm. like, under your under a post and so it's just talking about all of the different implications that come with having an anonymous uh footprint on social media on yourself and what you can be doing to others and it's really been good so far um we're trying to separate it basically into three different age categories because it is very different being online as mm -hmm. an elementary schooler versus being online as a high schooler but i do think that there is still a lot that a lot of high schoolers don't know mm -hmm. about what they can um what kind of information they can be giving out on social media and so um what that's really been going into is like getting a lot more statistics mm -hmm. um sharing like different we have, have like skits and stuff like what we, we can act out and also just talking about like safety on the internet and really keeping um that kind of stuff uh really important talking mm -hmm. about like websites that might you mm -hmm. know be a bad idea to go yeah just stuff like that and it's been uh really cool and a really good project that we've been working on exactly and we just putting more into what Hannah said, we've really worked hard with developing this. Our character ed um, director, she's from India, she's fabulous. Um, her name is Sanvi. Um, and she is just really working hard to get together different topics. So if someone is really interested in mental health, if someone is really interested in cyberbullying, if you are an older age group and you wanna talk about sexual harassment or bigger, more like heavier topics, we really want to have an interchangeable curriculum where, and again, also this is this goes into why a lot of character eds that deal with digital safety don't work in our opinion, is because there is that general disconnect, generational disconnect um, between older teachers who are talking down to students saying you shouldn't be on social media, um, when in reality, it's, it's hard for someone in another generation to understand the place where we are, um, where we use social media as an expressive tool, but yet it also can cause some really harmful mental health repercussions. So what we're trying to do too is create a teacher's guide saying, we're gonna walk you through this. Um, as a teacher, you can pick the topics you're most comfortable speaking on, but we're gonna give you a guide. We're gonna give you scripts. We're gonna give you all the information you need to have this conversation in a way that we think are, is going to reach students because right now it's not reaching them. Um, and then we also hope that there will be 
students at the schools that we go to, a lot of the people that have reached out to us to implement it in their schools, they are very gung-ho on kind of getting it into the school themselves. So we're hoping that either students or teachers can lead these conversations, but we, we really want it to be as accessible as possible. Yeah. We're hoping it will launch in June or July, um, right before the um, American school year, but we, we really hope to have it um, launch as this accessible piece where people can go on our website, access it, schedule a call with us if they need us to walk through it. Um, but we just want it to, to spread and, and kind of destigmatize that conversation about digital wellness and then also create a more humane narrative in, in schools, not a, a shaming one where if you have any issues, then you should just get off social media. We want to kind of change that narrative. Um, and then technically politics, which is the thing we are currently working the most on um, is a really cool advocacy project that an advocacy and legislative project that we are developing extremely quickly because in the United States, there is the Kids Act, um, which is this piece of legislation that works with, you know, like banning auto scroll, um, working on neuromarketing, like saying that big tech, com big tech companies can't neuromarket um, or manipulate or track user behavior on people under the age of like 16 or 18, um, basically just protecting kids and protecting the next generation. Um, so that is a law that is being pushed right now. There's a ton of legislation that's being pushed in Australia and in the UK. I can guarantee you in Canada, like it's, it's all over. It's, uh, there's a huge ripple effect going across the world. And we really wanted to get involved in that because they are trying to a lot of this um, a lot of these legislators are trying to protect kids yet kids are not in the conversation or at least teens are not in the conversation so we've gotten together with a um, teen member named Eliza Copens from Massachusetts um, and what we are doing is we are developing a kind of video testimonial type push so what we're doing is we're collecting teen stories video recordings of teens saying their experiences on social media its negative impact on their mental health um, and then we're going to use those stories, compile them together and create little YouTube episodes that are used as a call to action saying, you know, we're living through the problem, but you, the senators um, or whatever legislative body there is in your country can be a part of the solution. Reach out today. And we're going to try to really push that um, and hope to get some traction and help push forth regulation. And also, we want to put teens in a better light because right now the portrayal is Gen Z, they're like passive victims. And we're not passive victims, yet we just, we can't vote to push forth for this legislation. A lot of teens can. So we want to take that narrative and show there is power to our stories and to our voices, but it's gonna be through storytelling. And it's gonna be through saying our experiences on social media so that people can begin to understand our position and how we use social media in healthy ways, but also how it can negatively affect us. So that is something that's gonna be launching in the next month. Um, along with the LGBTQ plus initiative, and there are going to be many events there and with the female initiative. And then the school curriculum, we have an interest form on our website, but we also have, um, that's going to be launching a little later because it's going to take more time to develop the website. But these are um, our main tips. Um, a lot of people ask us at the end of these presentations, what do y'all do if you say, you know, it's unhealthy to be on social media for a certain amount of time? And if you were negatively affected by it, again, I'm a recovering social media addict. I still have it to a certain degree, um, but I really have to use these tips and tricks to help regulate myself and my screen time. Um, but Hannah, do you want to read the first one? And we'll kind of go through about how to use these to help regulate screen time and to get a better screen life balance. Yeah, so um, first of all, definitely download helpful screen time tracking apps such as Moment or Little Space. Um, I can definitely say for like, I as someone who usually uses the Apple like screen time mm -hmm. built in um, tracking app that like tells you like you've spent one hour, do you want to skip or remind? I feel like a lot of people just say 15 more minutes just over and over again. And that's not actually that helpful mm -hmm. because then you don't realize like how much time you're really spending because you're skipping, you're pressing skip four times. Mm -hmm. That's an hour. So moment and little space are both really good because they'll be like, you have spent like, you know, two hours yeah. on your phone today. And I think that's a lot more helpful. Um, but yeah, like, oh, a hundred percent. And I, I downloaded, so if anyone has seen the social dilemma out there, 
Um, Tim Kendall is the creator of Moment. He was like the growth um, president for Facebook. He was the president or CEO of Pinterest. Um, he was heavily involved in the tech space. Um, and my favorite line from the social, social Dilemma is the narrator person asked, you know, like, what do you think is going to happen because of social media? And he responds, civil war. And I remember being like, that's really intense. Um, but he he's just very passionate now about how can he unwind some of the stuff that he did as the presidents of like Facebook and Pinterest. So he created Moment. It is my favorite app by far. It does what Hannah said that kind of Apple fails to do. It doesn't give you that out. Um, it just says you've been on um, social media for three hours, two hours, whatever. And then it will send you things to like, this is a really long pickup time for you. Do you want to get off your phone? Do you really need this right now? It sends basic messages like that. But it, for me, at least remind me like, you know what? I don't want to be on here right now. Thank you, Tim Kendall. Um, and then also Moment has a really cool feature where you can kind of have a competition with your friends. Um, so I tried to get my friends to do it. Um, and it definitely is trial and, and error because some friend groups are not that um conducive to having that but it, it is really interesting to see your friends and see their times that they're on their phone um and it's kind of a a weird shaming device to get people to see the how little they can be on their phone but it, it's it's helpful it's definitely a very interesting app um and then the second one is just help start conversations um and feel free to use our new conversation guides so Basically, again, what we said in our presentation is just conversations are really going to push forward um, more productive dialogue about social media and its effect on our mental health and how to move through that. Um, and I truly think that by having those conversations with friends, teachers, having that conversation in an academic setting and a personal setting, people will begin to be more comfortable with talking about, you know, I'm struggling with this on my phone and there will be more support out there. So we really just want to get people talking more because we think that that's going to be really, really effective. But feel free to use our new conversation guide is we are also launching, um, hopefully in the next two weeks, we have a lot launching. Um, it is just a conversation guide series that works to get conversations into different settings. That's, a, oh, oopsie, that's my bad. Hold on. Let me go back. Can you um, I don't even know how to see. I'm not good with technology. Um, but it basically will, um, it's a guide that just goes through and has like 10 discussion questions, um, all based on different themes. So this month, it's going to be the social dilemma. In a few months, it's going to be privacy. After that, it's going to be mental health, stuff like that. Um, and those discussion questions can help you in a group setting really get people talking. They're, they're meant to get anyone in the conversation, not just someone who's into, you know, digital, digital wellness. wellness yeah. um, but we also had a YouTube conversation guide series where we're using that conversation guide with different members of the log off community to have a resource to show people how to use it and how fun it can be. So that's coming too. Um, and that will be in the next few weeks. So if anyone wants to use that guide, check our website out. Um, then you want to read the next one? Reframe the way you use social media. Try the five minutes of scroll reflection method. Yeah, so this one is by far the thing that helped me change my habits the most. So I went on Instagram because I decided I'm someone who just, I quit cold turkey after I figured out it was negatively affecting me. I got off for about three months mm -hmm. until I knew I could re-enter in a healthier way. So when I re-entered, I did the five minutes of scroll reflection method. So I put on the timer, I opened Instagram and I just scrolled through and each photo that either made me stressed, made me anxious. And again, I told myself, I have to be very, very conscious of how it's making me feel. Um, so I'd be like, does this make me happy? And if it didn't, I would unfollow the person. Um, doing something as simple as that and just saying truly, how do I feel when looking at this photo helped me curate a feed that only made me feel better and didn't make me feel like I had to stay on Instagram for longer. Um, and I still make myself do this every so often because I'll go back and I'll revert to following people that I don't want to. Um, and that five minutes of scroll reflection method is very helpful to just reminding yourself, I don't have to follow everyone. Followers don't matter. Likes don't matter. Let's reframe the way we are looking at social media. And then you can say the last one. Yeah, so the last one's definitely getting involved in your community um, using, so one example of this is Unplugged for a Cause. Um, I think Emma can talk a little bit more about this, but 
Yeah, so it's it, Unplug for a Cause is through the National Day of Unplugging, which is a really amazing organization that does a lot of community service work um, through the lens of improving mental health um, in regards to social media usage. It is a phenomenal um, push that they are doing called Unplug for a Cause, where you use the app Little Space, which is we didn't really touch on it, but it's it's a time tracking yeah, app. Yeah, it, it, you can like set mm -hmm. a timer and then mm -hmm. you, you go off your phone for that amount of time and it'll track your minutes mm -hmm. for you and if you pay if you go into a community and you raise a hundred dollars what they will do is they will set up a unplug for cause challenge for you um and it could be like we did one through our schools right. called unplug for a cause um sock challenge where for every 10 minutes you unplugged in for anyone in your community they would donate a pair of socks to a homeless shelter in your community. So there are a lot of cool ways to mobilize your community to get more involved in having less screen time. Um, because again, you know, a lot of connection on social media isn't as meaningful as what you can get with someone right next to you. And again, because of COVID, I think that a lot of people have begun to realize how important face-to-face -face interaction is. Um, and we think that Unplugged for a Cause really helps communities get to a place where they can have those discussions with each other um, and they can, be unplugging while giving back to their community yeah, for um, sure. because we we loved the unplugged for cause because we got to donate like 200 pairs of socks yeah, to our homeless shelter socks. it was a wonderful moment um so this is just a learn more get more involved um that is our website it's just log off movement um logmovement.org but you know there's the take action link which is how you can figure out how to get involved um, this is our general email and then these are our specific emails if anyone wants to reach us and I can always put those in the chat if anyone wants to have those too. Um, but that is our presentation. Um, we're really thankful that we were be able to come today. Um, it, you know, that's the one good thing about COVID. This wasn't in person this year. So we, we got to experience this festival with y'all and we're just really thankful that you invited Law Golf to come. And yeah. if anyone has any questions, we will stop sharing and we would gladly answer um, anything that y'all have for us. And if not, we can just sit here and kind of wait for any questions or anything like that. Can I ask a question? Of yeah, course. of course. Oh my God, I, uh, thank you, Emma and Han, is it Hannah? Yeah, thank you both so much. I'm just, as I was sitting there, I was reflecting on thinking about Dave and Jennifer who are have been producing the festival with me, how hard it is for us <laughs> to plan one email. And here you are doing all these incredible things. I mean, it's so inspiring. And I, I just if you could help other teens, and I know a lot of the students are on lunch right now, which is maybe why some, but I'm like, oh my God, everyone in the world has to be, listening to this right now. So if you could just share the gap maybe between where where you are now and when it started. And because I think some teens and myself included, it's so hard to picture what an outcome looks like. And so a lot of people just don't get started or something or or they don't think that they they'll be able to create something. And obviously log off is showing what is possible and that's another thing that's so inspiring so maybe you could just speak to that a little bit and if other students have questions i didn't want to interrupt but i had to get that out because i can't stay to the end and i just wanted to thank you so much that was a, that's awesome thank you um and that's that's a really good question that we've been asked a lot and i've reflected a lot on that because in the beginning i i say this over and over again i thought we would maybe spread through Birmingham, Alabama, maybe get to like Mississippi, other Southern states. Like Georgia. Yeah. yeah. We did not think we'd be in a place where we would have so many countries represented. Um, but we are, I was very, very lucky in the beginning when I had the idea for Log Off, it was just in my head. Um, and the number one thing that I did that I'm really glad for doing was getting Hannah involved, having a close friend who I we have very similar work ethics. Um, having a close friend there to push me to keep going when that end goal really wasn't in sight and we didn't know what log off was gonna 
become. Yeah. So in the beginning, we just decided to do research because I'm a huge researcher. Um, and also I didn't really want to jump into the digital wellness community because there are so many experts and super smart people in it. Um, so we knew that we wanted to be equipped with a certain level of knowledge. But I think the, the also the biggest thing that we did was realize we're never going to be experts. Mm -hmm. um, because that was going to be the biggest setback for us was just saying to ourselves, we aren't going to learn everything. If we keep telling ourselves that we just have to learn more before we start log off, we're never going to get to that point because there's so much information out there and we're teens. And just because we're not experts doesn't mean that we are not our experts on our own stories and experiences. So after we kind of came to that conclusion, we jumped in the deep end. So I, I'm not a website designer, but I started fiddling around with website design took me a few weeks, finally found the template I wanted on Wix. Um, and then we just decided randomly one day, let's launch, let's get it out there. So at least it's in the world and we will build from there. Um, so after we launched um, and we made like one Instagram post, um, then we decided to just jump in and we began reaching out to people. We went on those social media apps. I went on Reddit. Um, and I messaged a bunch of sub communities saying, this is something we're doing, join us if you are part of the conversation. And of course we got some heat from random online trolls, but um, out of the like thousands of people that may have said mean comments, we got some of our most dedicated log off team members. Oh, 100%. Also, sorry. Sorry, um, also, yeah, it was like what Emma was saying about not being mm -hmm. like, uh, like geniuses or mm -hmm. like not being very knowledgeable about the, actual effects of this topic one of the coolest things was being able to talk to people who actually were like oh, yeah. definitely really invested and I think Emma is also being like really humble because she did like if you go on the log off website it is like beautiful um <laughs> and it, it it's like um definitely one of the like one of the nicest websites I've seen on Wix and I think um the accessibility of like just how easy the website was to navigate um, definitely gave us a lot of like credibility, especially mm -hmm. with like uh, getting new recruits in. And I think that was really nice. And also just the, um, it was immediate, it was really easy for us to immediately mm -hmm. get in contact with everyone who wanted to join. Cause it was yeah. like during quarantine, we had a lot of free time. And a lot of other people had free time. And I also think that with that part of like, we're not experts. Yeah. Hannah's right. One of the best things my sister ever said to me was like, if you reach out to someone and you show that you're passionate about something, nine times out of 10, they will respond with, with the same passion and want to speak with you. So we just started researching the digital wellness people in the industry and reaching out. And in the first month, we probably had like a hundred phone calls yeah, with people. Yeah, a lot of emails. And that was a way for, for yeah. us to get more acclimated in the space, but also to make those contacts and do networking. And that really set us up for success because then we did the um, Youth for Youth Global Digital Wellness Festival. And then after that, it was a steady flow of, okay, then we're gonna do a webinar with the Center for Humane. Okay, we keep getting new members. I had a really cool um, opportunity to do a YouTube Jubilee episode yeah. um, on digital wellness. And those opportunities just started to flow because people could see how passionate we were. So I think that passion and that acceptance of like, you're not gonna be an expert, but you will learn along the way was really what got us started. Yeah, it's definitely mm -hmm. really cool too that, you know, you were a teen who wanted to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think there were a lot of like teen social media <laughs> no. at the time. <laughs> no, amazing. Cool. Thank you so much. And um, I have to go to the one o'clock session, but that was awesome. Thank you for joining us. And I hope other teens ask questions, but uh, thank you again. And, and best of luck with school and everything else. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Bye. Yeah. Um, Emma and Hannah, maybe I can ask you a question, but I should say teachers and students, if you do have any anything you want to ask our, our distinguished guests, please put in the chat, turn your audio on your video. Uh, yes, definitely feel welcome to do that. Um, uh, Hannah and uh, Emma, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about why you think social media is so problematic. Um, I think sometimes you really painted a picture of, of addiction and, and overcoming something that can really stand in the way of of mental health and and feeling good about oneself. Why is why does social media why does it affect us so negatively? Why do we become addicted to this thing? Um, what are your views on that? What are some of the experts that you've spoken to say? What does your research suggest? Um, yeah, why is it such a problem? Yeah, and I can start off and you can yeah. kind of go on it. Um, so I think that 
I just had a webinar, um, which it was one of the best webinars I've ever been in, um, with Dr. Lemke, who is an addiction specialist at Stanford, and then with Jeff Orlowski, who is the um, director of The Social Dilemma, two very knowledgeable people in the field. Um, and what they said and what they echoed was just the insane time that is spent into developing and curating algorithms. Um, so that was also for me one of the most interesting things about getting into the field um, and getting into just the community was that I realized how much time is put towards this attention economy, which is just for people that are not in the digital wellness community, it is just this idea that every company is trying to develop an algorithm that knows you best, that can give you the best feed, that can keep your attention for as long as possible. Every time you scroll on an image, it figures out how long are you looking at it? Are you liking it? What is your scroll pattern? Every single question imaginable, they are tracking in order to curate a better algorithm for you. Um, so that was one thing for me that I was a little shocked about. I understood subconsciously, you know, they're tracking me in some way, but it's just like they're collecting data. No, it's much deeper than that. Um, and I think that, again, there are a lot of things in place and there are a lot of big tech companies that they put so much money into figuring out what is the most addictive for you. Um, and one of my favorite comparisons was just this idea of the slot machine. So every time you go on social media, it is a never ending feed. Every time you go on TikTok, they're very short videos to keep your attention. But every time you go on, you think to yourself, there could be that next video. Or if I make one more video, I could be TikTok famous. There are things like that that are put into place to make it more and more addicting. So that you go in saying, oh, I, I could be missing out on something. There's that sense of FOMO. And yet most of the time people go on, it's not that they're missing out on anything. It's just that sense of like fear of missing out. Um, and then of course, also the quantifications of value. I think that's really detrimental to a lot of teens. And that's what causes a lot of mental health spikes in suicide, anxiety, and depression is the fact that you can say, oh, Hannah got 50 likes and I only got 20. She got 30 comments and I got 10. And that's just such an easy way to compare yourself between people, but it's so meaningless, yet in that social media kind of environment, it can so easily turn into something that is harmful to your mental health. And that's what a lot of studies and people um, in the industry have told us is that has really just caused so many issues with self-image and mental health within Gen Z. And it's something that needs to be addressed specifically in regulation on how can we help unwind this huge issue that has been started through likes and comments on social media. So that's my perspective on why it's so corrosive, mainly through that algorithm, Algorithm, but Hannah can kind of touch on the other stuff too. Oh no, I definitely agree completely with Emma. It's like, that's definitely what I would say. Um, I think it's also just like, it gives you a sense of connection in a way. I think like uh, when you post something, mm -hmm. you get a comment, you like feel like you're connected, but it, it, it's definitely like a, a very strange form of, almost disconnection at the yeah. same time and yeah I definitely think um there's a lot of reward when it comes to mm -hmm. social media that people love to get and I also you know have social media so I like totally uh, understand mm -hmm. like the reward system um but yeah I, yeah I definitely just like echo everything you just said yeah the myth of hyper connectivity is definitely something that that was the first thing I found while researching was just this myth of um if you stay on Instagram at all times, like you're guaranteed to find a connection. There are billions of people out there that could be your follow request. Like keep going on, you'll connect with people. But again, I find so much more from going out and talking to people face to face than going on social media. But I think a lot of people in our generation turn to social media first and we're trying to reroute that kind of prior prioritization of connection. Great, uh, Emma and Hannah, thanks, thanks for those thoughtful answers. Uh, there's two questions in the chat and maybe I can pose them uh, to you. Uh, Boomi asked a really interesting question. Emma, you mentioned that you were addicted to social media, but then you sort of one day you went cold turkey. Um, what did you do the next day? Although, I mean, I think what, 180 minutes per, per day spent on social media on average, maybe you're spending more. How did you, how did you fill your time? What did you do? See, that is that is such a good question because a lot of people in our friend group when we're like, hey, let's get off your phone or let's let's unplug people were like, well, what am I what am I gonna do? And I had that same realization when I deleted social media. Um, but very quickly I realized how much of my life I spent doing something that I could have 
funneled towards different hobbies. So I started reading more. I have two siblings. Um, I actually started talking with them. Um, I went on more walks. I um, embroidered. Like there are so many things out there that I had never experienced and never really been a part of. And again, I did watch TV to a certain degree. Um, so it wasn't like I was fully screenless, but I felt like I was engaging with technology in a much more productive way for me while also exploring things that I really wanted to be a part of. Like I've always been a someone who's enjoyed reading, but I've only done like summer reading books and school assignments. So branching out and pushing myself to get more into things that I've always wanted to get a, become a part of, um, that social media inhibited me from really joining, that, that was the biggest thing for me. And I don't know, Hannah um, didn't really touch on it, but she had a lot of eye issues from like the blue light and being on her phone so much. Um, and I know we had long conversations about what could we do. And one of them was just like going on walks during um, yeah. quarantine and even making those small changes. And then even like going back and watching TV, like those small changes will come like, yeah, yeah so like things that are like further mm -hmm. away from your face for sure. Mm -hmm. They build up and they make a really big difference. So that's a wonderful question. And I also, I hope more people will explore ways to unplug, even if it does technically involve a screen, how can we use that time in a more productive way? And that's what I have to ask myself every day. Great. Um, again, really, really, those are really inspiring answers. I like that. I love the idea of really prioritizing, like you said, spending time with your siblings, going outside, hanging out in person, face-to-face -face contact. I feel like that is so crucial for the human species. We, we need it. We need to see people in person. Um, and screens often get in the way of that. Um, Evelyn asks a really interesting question. Um, log off is not quote, I mean, it's becoming more popular, but it's not popular to tell people, I don't mean that literally, I mean the idea that when I tell people, hey, maybe you need to think about how you use your cell phone, how you use social media, they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Where are there times when you felt like, hey, you know what, we're fighting, this is too big, it's well beyond us, we're fighting big tech, we're fighting these huge industries. Um, Emma, Hannah, did you ever feel like, hey, you know what, um, I, this is too much for us? You know, I, I don't know about you, after watching The Social Dilemma, I remember being like, oh my goodness. I don't know, again, I really suggest watching that film, but seeing experts and people that used to be like into the community, one guy who created like the like button on Facebook, um, seeing all of them be like, this is a fight that we cannot win and being so pessimistic, it freaked me out at first. I personally, I don't know about you, I never felt that like we're fighting a, a giant that's yeah. too big because I think our goals were really small mm -hmm. from the beginning. They mm -hmm. were just focused on our age group and mm -hmm. like the the teenagers and like specifically like body, like, uh, just, yeah, self-image and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And there definitely have been conversations with friends where they're like, that's really funny or they're like, they'll make fun of log off to a certain degree. But during COVID, I really think we launched at a perfect time because people were beginning to actually want to engage in that conversation saying like, oh, I'm like stuck at home. I, I physically cannot see my friends. I'm tired of that. So that fatigue has, I think, pushed a lot of people to be more willing to have that conversation. Um, and I agree with Hannah where our goal is so small at first. Now that we're at the place where we're beginning to gain more traction and I never thought we would be in the space to push for like legislative, legislation. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now that we're in this place, for me, it makes me more excited um, because the more that we do webinars and the more that we spread log off, even if people are not engaging with the conversation, they're at least thinking about it to a certain degree. And as long as we get people to start thinking, then hopefully that turns into talking. Um, we hope to see some change. Um, and, and again, on that legislative front, we really hope to be able to at least push against some of the big tech companies, which again, it, they are these huge monsters. Um, but to me, it's kind of funny because I just I, I think the fact that log off is getting involved to a certain degree just shows that more teens are getting fed up with it. Um, so that's a really interesting question, but I haven't really felt that fatigue and I don't think that we will. Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks, Emma. Uh, students or teachers, if you have more questions, keep them coming in the chat. Um, Emma, you, you said something interesting about um, sort of I think it was in relation to mindful scrolling. Um, or so, something related to that, where you would sort of critically think about who you're following and whether you want to follow them or not. 
what are some rules um, that you've thought about in terms of, or what are some guidelines that you think about in terms of deciding who to follow and who to unfollow? How, how do we know who is a who is worthy of our attention and who's not? I see. For me, that is, it's just such a simple question, but again, it took me a while to, to really get used to asking this one question and then deciding for that. For me, I just say like, am I happy looking at this post? Um, if I'm not, then that spirals into a few more questions. Like, why did I ever follow them in the first place? If it's that they're a distant friend that I'm not really connected with, then I opt for the, I don't need to follow them. Um, again, it's not always that black and white there, yeah. there are always some exceptions where it's like, oh gosh, they're my cousin. Does that post make mm -hmm. me happy? No, but they're my family. Um, but in general, I feel like if you go through your scroll or I know for Hannah and I, when we went through our, our feed, there are so many more people that I follow that I just don't want to, and that I have no ties to than I imagined. Um, so I think that that simple question of, am I happy? Like looking at this, do I benefit? Um, mentally, how am I doing? Am I anxious? Am I upset? Um, if I were to stop scrolling right now, would I be happy with the time that I just wasted or would it feel like a waste? Um, asking that one question and then those, those subsequent other ones about mental health really helped me kind of curate my feed. But again, it definitely is something that I think is more shocking to people um, because it's, it's weird how followers amount and how people kind of get together their social media persona because a lot of times it's full of really trivial follows yeah. and likes that people don't necessarily feel like they need but yeah. it it definitely is a big step to take that leap and unfollow people because there is that stigma around like oh do you follow more people than follow you um and like who are you following? Are you following like weird meme accounts when you should have like a lower following count? There's a lot of weird stigma on social media about that. But I think if people begin to think through like, why is that? You come to the conclusion that like, it's just trivial. It doesn't matter. Um, but it, it can take a while to get to that point to want to have that conversation and want to go through your feed and curate it. Yeah. I think it's also like, a, like, per it varies a lot, like from person to person. Like, um, like I personally had to uh, like for myself I unfollowed a lot of like famous like yeah. ins influencers people who you know a lot of like people a, a face tune was really like hard oh, for yeah. me I like yeah that's like something I kind of cut out of my Instagram that definitely made me happier when I was on, on the mm -hmm. Instagram. great um thank you thanks for those great answers um uh, Diana has a really really interesting question um, are there some social media platforms that are better than others? Are there any in particular that you recommend, any you suggest we all stay away from? You know, I, I, it's a really good question. I try to stay away from it to a certain degree because I know for a lot of people, sometimes like Snapchat is better because you're seeing a person's face. Um, I've never been a fan of TikTok personally. Um, TikTok for me is like, it's it's one of those really hard apps to curate and to kind of rein in. Um, I think if those mechanisms are in place, like having moment um, and having those apps that can track your screen time, it can be really helpful. But there is that weird rise in, in at least in our friend group and in um, Birmingham. And I don't know about other areas of the world of people being like, I'm TikTok addicted. Like it's an addiction because their the algorithm is, crazy is good. so good. And it's like it figures out what you want way but, better than others. So a lot of time is funneled into TikTok, but I will say that almost all of my friends that spend a lot of time on there surprisingly come out and say, I liked that. Like I enjoyed spending my time on TikTok um, because their algorithm is so good. So I think with a lot of people, um, TikTok can be either the worst or the best. I think it's one of those that you really have to balance and, and put in those restrictions. Um, Instagram is a beast in and of itself. It can be really difficult to kind of curate. Um, Snapchat is interesting. YouTube, if you even consider it, can it's I think that's fine for the yeah. most part. Um, there are always going to be those good things. Twitter is in interesting. Twitter is interesting. Um, I think Pinterest is is nice. Um, yeah, but a lot of times too, like if if I need an app that is, if I need a social media app that's better for me, I try to go and search because there are a lot of new social media apps that are coming out that are working more to incorporate voice and like head. Oh, what is it called? Like head stream or that new app where it's like an audio like meeting 
there there's some apps and like cappuccino oh I know. Um, I know what you're talking yeah about. and um the daily helloa that's kind of like a really cute oh yeah that yeah was really cute. you use it like once a day they ask a question and then it's a, like a board of sticky notes from around the globe of people answering the same question so I would really encourage people to go out and search for other social media like um apps because I think that there are a lot of really cool things out there that aren't as addicting and that you will enjoy your time on but also if you enjoy those times that you spend on TikTok or Instagram or Snapchat I say if it makes you happy you can keep doing it but make sure that you're doing it in a regulated way that truly does um, make you feel like you've benefited from it because a lot of times it can quickly turn from something that's beneficial to something that harms you and is an addiction so you have to walk that fine line um, I get, maybe the last question uh, we have time for, uh, unless something else pops up in the chat, and, and if there is, students or teachers, please feel free to, to post it. Um, Emma and Hannah, it sounds like um, underpinning or sort of behind everything you're doing is a lot of courage. The courage to disconnect, the courage to maybe tell your friends that you're doing something different. Um, when I got rid of my cell phone and I wasn't texting in the same way, I felt a lot of peer pressure to, to sort of give in and, and sort of reconnect with my, with my phone. And I didn't want to, but I felt the pressure. I felt it from my family in some ways. Um, had, what, what are some suggestions you would give to others who, who feel that pressure to stay on social media, just like everyone else is? Um, how do you sort of find that courage? Where, where, what are some, what, what's some guidance you can provide all of us? Well, I think that's well, one thank you, but I, I think that one thing too about log off is we both still like struggle to a certain degree, like especially with we both are going to college next year um, and we're trying to find roommates or we're trying, trying to like keep in contact with, connect high with people. Friends. Yeah. So right now we are even navigating like how do we truly find that balance now that all these things are arising. But I think that we are so comfortable having that conversation with each other and having that person to be like, and I've been on my phone like all day what am I doing um having that support system and having that courage to speak forth and say I'm struggling and I need to find these apps to put in place to help me that took a while for me to get to that place but I think I'd say to people get a buddy or at least start talking with people if I wouldn't have reached out to Hannah and and learned that she was struggling too then I, I wouldn't really have that support system that is so important for me while I continue through my journey. Um, and I continue to just to get better and healthier habits on social media. So I think one, I'd say to get that courage, get a buddy, um, get a support system, talk with your family, um, be able to go to someone and say, you know, I was really good yesterday and now I'm not that great, but like it's progress. It's, it's a process. Um, and then I think also having the courage to just slowly build up the the I feel like I'm very um proud to say that I'm working on it yeah. because to me I know it's an issue that a lot of people struggle with and I think having that understanding and being like a lot of people think this but social media is feeding me this idea that a lot of people are just on right now and a lot of people are on Instagram and Snapchat and mm -hmm. TikTok and they are are not into the idea of digital wellness that's fake because we saw so many teens from around the globe flood to log off um so i think having that knowledge and knowing that i'm the one speaking out and saying that i'm struggling and saying that i'm working on these apps and asking people to stack their phones but i know other people think that subconsciously to a certain degree um i think remembering that has really helped me become more proud of my attempts to get, kind of get my friends off their phones um, but in general, again, it is a process. And I'd say that the two most important things for me was a buddy and then, and having that underlying knowledge. And do you have anything else to say about Hannah? Oh, yeah, I totally agree with Emma, um, in terms of like, uh, what she was saying in terms of like having a support system. Um, also I was reading Evelyn and Alexa's, uh, or Ale Alexandra's comments. And I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool things that you can find on social media, like, the underpass park that you found on TikTok and also mm -hmm. um, what Ale Alexander said about like not wanting to go back on Instagram mm -hmm. at all. And I think like that, those are both really good points. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, yeah, that's the whole point of log off. It's very multifaceted in terms of like how your individual mm -hmm. experience is going to be. So yeah. Exactly. And then for the last, just do you have any suggestions for older people that are addicted to social media? I'd say it's the same thing too, like getting those apps in place, finding the support system. Really, Moment is just my favorite. I suggest it to everyone. 
um, and then slowly replacing your social media time with um, hobbies, whether that's mm-hmm. cooking, whether that is like embroidering for me, whether that's watching a new like TV show. Mm-hmm. I honestly would um, just make those smaller steps where you say, whenever you scroll, um, I'm going to be on Instagram for an hour a day. And then after that, I have to find other hobbies. So for me, putting in those restrictions at first was difficult, but then I, I eased into it and I'm, I'm kind of leaning back into that now with the whole college process. Yeah. Um, so that's, those are some things that I would, I would suggest to people. Yeah. And if cold Turkey like won't work for you, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, just like cutting down like step-by-step is definitely how I did it. Mm -hmm. I know Emma did cold Turkey, but (laughs) I, yeah. So it changes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Emma and Hannah, thank you so much. We are we are right up against the clock, but that was a, a great presentation. It's really inspiring to hear all the work you're doing, um, the courage you have, the the insight into something that is so central to all of our lives that we really need to think deeply and more critically about. And um, and I, I really thank you for uh, joining us all the way from Alabama um, with your with your American accents. It's great. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, I'm sure I sound very Canadian, but it's good to, like you said, we're, we're able to connect online through, the, through these tough times. And without it, we wouldn't be able to hear about your important work. So, so thank you again. If you want to post your, uh, the website on chat, just so all the students and teachers know how to get in touch with you or to learn more about um, all the great things you're doing. Absolutely. And, and I guess the most important question is, how do we follow you on social media? Great question. Um, so we have a very healthy curated social media we use to post updates on things and opportunities and it's just log off movement. Um, and you can find us on mainly Instagram, sometimes Twitter, um, not TikTok. So <laughs> and then also you can just find all of those links to via our website, which is just logoffmovement.org. And if one were to become addicted to your social media channels, <laughs> what would one do with that problem? Oh, one just email us and we'll hop on a call and we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, awesome. yeah. Well, yeah. well, thank you again. I, I really appreciate it. And to the students and teachers who joined us, thank you so much for participating. Um, I posted a link to a survey. So please tell us everything you thought about this great presentation. We'd love to hear more uh, about your comments and suggestions and, and feelings and, and everything you thought about. So, so thank you again to everyone and uh, have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.